My first time I heard yep. the Sex Pistols. What was going through your head? What did you think? Uh, I loved it. I loved it. I, I loved more what they did instead of the music, though. See, I liked... Oh, what because, is that kind of comment? You know, it's, it's a... Uh, I knew Malcolm McLaren, of course, and Vivian Westwood. I met them at, you know, uh, clothing trade shows as they, you know, back then they called them boutique shows. In New York City in 1971, I met them. I was with a company called Truth and Soul, and they were uh, Let It Rock. And, um, and so, you know, that whole angle with the clothing thing, which I had already started before the, even, you know, my success in music and stuff like that. But we fast forward it to like 1975, when these guys really, you know, started to come out. It was, you know, I think basically because of the, the ground that the New York Dolls had already, you know, kind of broke through and now the doors were open and swinging. Uh, I mean, I remember everybody buying two of their records <laughs> because one is to like play and the other one to keep forever to who knows what, you know, as a souvenir and stuff. So they sold uh, tons of records. They, made, they became very, very famous. I mean, they were all over the place. They were superstars and, you know, I loved it. I thought that that whole slap in the face, let's start all over again, you know, and back to two, three chords, you know, complain yeah. about, you know, why you ain't getting bread every morning and everything else, or getting laid or whatever the problem is, you know. And, uh, didn't have that problem. You didn't have that problem? <laughs> He's a wanker, that's why. <laughs> Thanks. Um, <laughs> no, no, just kidding. The reason I got together with Stephen Paul was I, I was in the shop one day and they had this band going, and I and they used to come in and they were like real kind of likely lads, you know, like ducking it. And I, it was my job to make sure I didn't nick anything. But I was always <laughs> trying to get. I don't, I don't know how successful I was, right? I, <laughs> probably not. Probably very not very. Right. <laughs> but Malcolm kind of sort of took them under their wing a little bit, and they had a band, and he was asking them how it was going, and. Paul Cook, the drummer, was moaning that a bass player never turned up. You know, he don't, doesn't take it seriously. I think the bass player was this guy called Dell, who was Paul's sister's fiance or something like that. And I just said, well, I'm, I play bass. And I didn't really, but I kind of had a bass and I was learning it a little yeah. bit. And they went, what bands do you like? And I said, I like the faces. And they went, oh, really? And that was it. That was a common ground. So I went and had a play with them. John wasn't in the band then. And in fact, I went to see, not the faces, but Ronnie Wood. He was doing a new Barbarians thing. And I saved up some money and bought a ticket with my girlfriend. And we didn't, we only had cheap tickets upstairs. And we went to this place, the Gaumont State, um, the Gaumont State Cinema in Kilburn, in, in North London. And we wasn't sure what floor we was on. So we went up one floor too many and it was all a bit dark. And just as we're thinking, this ain't the right level, there was a kerfuffle and these guys came out of the gloom and it was Steve and Paul and their mates and they'd broken in through the roof. <laughs> And I just met these guys and I thought, oh, right, okay, it's going to be like that. And it was like that and it was great. <laughs> Our sound guy, a guy called Dave Goodman, and he'd been fine for certain things. We'd done all the original demos with him. But uh, Malcolm Claren insisted on being in the studio, which wasn't a good move. And we kept playing the song over and over and over and over and over, and over again. And it was getting faster and faster. And Malcolm was going, it's not exciting enough. And it's not exciting enough. And we kind of went on strike in the end. Said, Look. And then we got... Um, we got Chris Thomason to do it, and we played the song a few times, and he said, great, we got it, you know, and there was no rotten, because he, he's gone, I'm not coming down here, you guys can't play. But as we've been saying all along, that it was fine, and we needed somebody to tell Malcolm to go away, and realise when it was good, so that, that was it, you know, basically. But it, it was, you know, there was a certain amount of fun involved getting it together, but to me, I felt like it was almost like in the Blues Brothers, you know, when they get out of prison and they go and see Aretha Franklin in the bar and give the guy who they're looking for a message, you know, what well, should I say, well, we're on a mission for God, you know, we were like on a mission <laughs> to kind of do something, start up, because when the pistols were happening, there was nobody else in London doing it. We were a good year above ahead of everybody else, and in fact, when we first got a lot of press, there was two people, there was a girl called Caroline Kuhn who wrote for Melody Maker and there was a guy called John Inman who wrote for Sounds and they were like kind of cub reporters and they kind of took the punk thing, except it wasn't called punk at that time in England, 
and they sort of saw it as their, their kind of their pet calls and they did these big the same way they did these big articles in both papers came out the same week all, all about punk which we'd never heard of that term before we'd only heard of punk i.e. from like you know those Nuggets records which really wasn't us and from James Cagney movies you dirty punk you know we, if you look up what punk means it's not the best thing to be called in a world right so that was that but I remember reading this article with John at me over and I said well it's kind of cool but I don't see what they're getting at because they mentioned a few other bands that had come up by then and John said it says it says quite clearly that we were the first and it was, it was true, we, we were like, like the kind of standard bearers and as soon as we started making headway, people rallied around us. You know.